Mind. Yep, good to go. We are live in ah. GarageBand in 3, 2, 1.21 gigawatts. Nice. Nice touch. <laughs> and here we are for not one, not two, but your third fermentation conversation. Uh, I am Beer Coaster Tony coming out of Hartford, Connecticut, and we are going to be all drinking the Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. I got the can. You got the can. You got the can? Yeah. I didn't get the can. Oh. I got the bottle. Oh. Mike, did... Mike went old school. I, loser. I had the Sierra can, but Dogfish bottle. He hates these cans. <laughs> um, if you have not heard, uh, the Dogfish Head Brewery uh, has been brewing since 1995 out of Milton, Delaware. Their website is dogfish.com. This is a uh, IPA, uh, and they call it a 60-minute IPA because, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but they actually continually hop this beer. Great uh, Scott! Hence the name, 60-minute <laughs> IPA. Um, it's heavy, man. Yeah, ABV is, is uh, 6, and the IBUs is 60. Ooh, um, right there. Right at, very right nice there. range. That's, yeah, Ooh. that's the, Toby's very, very nice, nice range. That's, uh, very nice. that's at the cusp. The very nice range. Now, these guys have been brewing since 1995, uh, but the 60-minute IPA was introduced back in 2003. Yeah, because wow. they did the 90 really? first, right? Okay. The 90 was before really? the 60. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't read that, but I will. I'll, I trust you on that one. I, I, hey, I heard it from Sam himself. Okay. Well, you know. As a matter of fact, wait, 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 wait. If you don't believe me, you can listen to Sam right now. Wow. Thanks, that Sam. That was awesome. Hey, yes. thanks, Sam. I appreciate Sam, that. He keeps Don't making special appearances on the show. He knows his stuff and even went on location to, like, try that beer. Yeah. Like, this is right around the corner from Dogfish Head. That was pretty cool. Is, in that, Maine. is that in the budget? Uh, well, we made it, the, it. Well, we're still financing it. It will pay it off sometime, maybe 2030. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Pitch your pennies, man. But hey, if that Patreon thing ever works out, maybe it'll be a couple hey. years sooner. Yeah, maybe we can buy one of those 60 minutes with the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a year-round release, um, <clears throat> and uh, let's crack it. All right, now we're talking. Speaking my language, none of that Portuguese. <laughs> Hashtag appropriate glassware. Yes, I, I oh, don't have any bad. dogfish glasses. I was disappointed in myself. <clears throat> Sam, if you're listening, I could use a dogfish head glass. Send it to the uh, Beer Coasters podcast. Boston chapter. Yeah, P.O. Box. Whew. On Zippor. Yeah, I got a Yeti, big Yeti finger head on there. Big Yeti. Oof. Yeah. I got a same. Perfect uh, human finger here. Uh, I, I didn't get a little anything. more gingerly than the other two coasters. I didn't get anything uh, in terms of what he uses for uh, a malt bill, but it did say that it used a boatload of intense Northwest hops. Like Warrior, Amarillo, and a Mystery Hop X, they say. Ooh. Sure you know, I wonder if Mystery Hop X is an actual name of a hop, or they're trying to do what Stone does by not revealing. Like if it's some kind of their own hybrid hop that they're calling Mystery X. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm I think I got some chill haze, because I got a little bit of cloudiness happening. And it's it's a light orange color. This is probably the. Uh, would you say the darkest one of the three that we've had? It's the uh, least uh, transparent. Fizzy yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a little cloudier. This is I don't know. It's it's more golden. I think it's. Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
Well, I wish I could see them kind of side by side, because I don't feel that way. Yeah, I think the other ones are a little darker. They're a little more amber. This to oh, me okay. is a little more orange. Yeah, this is yellowish orange. Gold. Yeah, what was it? The lager that you just had, Toby? Just holding it up. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Boston lager. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And here's the Sierra. It is a little. It's more unfil. It was definitely an unfiltered. Yeah. Uh, it has an unfiltered look to it. On the nose. Big citrus hops. Yeah. I can't even get the spicy, dry. Ooh. Like lemon. Maybe? Yeah. Get some lemon in there. Lemon peel. A little bit of pine. Mm hmm. Very, it smells very northwesty. Oh yeah. Hmm. Ooh, I'm even getting a little perfumey. Well, it's just funny that Mike says that because I always feel like I'm the only one that kind of picks up on those types of things, like the northwesty smells and flavors of of mm. beers. I think this was one of the first beers that I had. Uh, that really just was that bitter beer that my friend offered up and I tried it and I thought it was disgusting. Yeah. That's why I, I I'll have to say up. before I even take a sip of this that I, I mean the 90 minute for me is, uh, I mean, I love the 90 minute. I think it's, 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 it's great. It's, it's less, less dry than the 60. And, um, I don't know. It's just a little more multi. I, I like that, that balance of the 90 over, over this one. More malty, uh, more boozy, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was talking to Gina today about the show and was it's telling good. her communication's important in a marriage. Was, was telling her about <laughs> the three beers that we're doing and they're kind of like, you know, the classic like Mike was saying, the classic craft classics or whatever. Craft classics. Mm. And so I feel like we, we should have little polo shirts to say craft classics. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Let's do it. With the three logos. <laughs> and She's and so when it came to the IPA, she's like, "Really, the sixty minute? That's your classic IPA?" So I started thinking about like, I don't know what is like the most popular. It's it's kind IPA. of the young. It's the young version. It's the newer version of the classic, I think. You know, because Dogfish Head obviously later in the game than than the Boston Beer Company but, or Sierra Nevada. But as far as like. <coughs> When you think of like a classic IPA that you think everybody should know about as like the IPA, sixty Harpoon? minute doesn't really come to mind. Even though we chose this one because we have our reasons for choosing the sixty minute. Because I think it it was adopted as their flagship. You know, like yeah. it wasn't originally, but it it I think it it became, you know. Yeah. This was the the first one that I had that like when I think of the first IPA that I had it was this one. But yeah. I was also thinking of like East Coast versus West Coast and this was the big discussion that we would have over past shows and that's kind of how we came to this particular episode was yeah. because of the 60 minute. We talked about 6 minute East Coast West Coast. This is the quintessential East Coast IPA. So then right. we started talking about well, why don't we do a show where we kind of go back to these classic beers craft beers and re review them yeah so i went to untapped and all i did was type in the search bar ipa the number one ipa the most popular is the lagunitas ipa ah okay number two is the two hearted ale from a from bells Films, and yeah. I kind of agree with that. I don't think we all can get that, though. Yeah, I, I thought that the Two Hearted was just a pale ale. I didn't know that it was an IPA. And then the All Day IPA from Founders, which I don't really believe that that's that nope. popular. Goose, Very good. But... The Goose IPA from Goose Island, which to me makes total sense because they're AB now. Just because so of, of distribution. They've got yep. the reach. They, they can get in the hands of more, more people. So. <laughs> then the Sculpin, <laughs> and then 60 Minutes. Okay. So, but as far as as uh, 
Well, people didn't have cell phones back in like right. you know 2003. <laughs> You know, there wasn't untapped wasn't exactly. around. So, so that's why I think that this kind of work that this works out better because this has been around a lot longer than the well, Sculpin I think is more recent than two thousand three, for sure. The all day for but sure not as big. Dogfish Head's kind of be a, I mean a bigger brewery than yeah. Than some so of anyway, those guys. I don't it was know. just interesting that Gina yeah. brought that up. She was like. That's your IPA? Cla- so I started to think, well, what other classic IPAs are out there? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, anyway, that's something for the listeners to think about. Yeah, and, and of course, <laughs> there's going to be some regional the listener, bias sorry, there. The so listener. I guess, yeah. <laughs> you hear that? How do you say that in Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just thought that it was interesting. Stone IPA is less popular than 60 Minutes. Because that was one of the first ones I thought of when she asked me that. I was like, Stone IPA? Is that more popular? But apparently... No, see, tap, this is where not... your regional bias is starting to take yeah. take shape here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say Harpoon IPA would be up on that list, right. too. Right, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. we would throw that up here. And that's yeah. that's another, like, that'd be more of a regional uh, you well, know, like, regional what was thing. What was one of those first actual ipas that came out that people were like for me it was harpoon that was my first one you know i was at a party at my cousin's house and someone had put it in the cooler and i grabbed it instead of the other stuff that was there which is most likely bud light and and whatever so Mm. that was my i mean that was my first introduction to, to 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 craft beer and even harpoon at the time was like bitter and i was like what the heck is this this is so different you know uh, but it definitely sparked my curiosity. Your introduction was stealing someone else's beer that they brought to that party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That they hid purposefully. They, they buried hid. it. And they, yeah, they it. buried it in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. It's like you go to the fridge and you put your <laughs> six pack way in the back, behind the Heineken and everything. <laughs> and then you find that it's just yours that are missing, and yeah. <laughs> all those Heinekens are still all. The Bastards. <clears throat> all right. All right. Anyways, enough reminiscing, I guess, right? Yeah. Let's take a sip. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. I get the citrus. Oh, did we talk about ingredients and stuff? Yeah, I I mean, I I I couldn't really find any sort of malt bill, uh, ingredients but it said that it was brewed with a uh bless you thanks a uh a boatload of oh, north right. northwest hops warrior amarillo and that mystery hop x that's right mystery hop x it's uh, pretty light i get a little malty sweetness in there but it's not like yeah. bam it's not smack you in the face it's dry though it's got it dries right up. Yeah, I would say it may even be drier than the Sierra Nevada was. Yeah, and it has that. It has like the orange peel and yeah, it, yeah. Very There's something clean. A little, a little pithy about it. Yeah. Would you say this is more bitter than the pale ale? Hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's bitter and drier for sure. Um, Some orange, but orange skin I, or like grapefruit also skin. So that it, yeah. The malt is feels lighter, paler, you know, thinner than I think the uh, Sierra Nevada did too. <clears throat> and I wish I had them still in front of me so I could drink them but they're in my belly <laughs> but even the malt even seems a little creamier yeah so more yeah, it's like smoother a... it's much smoother than i remember it's not as yeah it's not as prickly and as bitter as i remember agreed <clears throat> yeah that's a good <clears throat> i think that that's a good distinction between east coast and west coast is west coast could be more prickly than mm. the east coast the east coasts are more uh, smoother, creamier, because you know the whole like I don't know, unfiltered or yeah. or hazy. 
Yeah, which is funny because that that's what seems to be that was the deciding factor that I never really uh, <clears throat> realized in the beginning that that you know the East Coast style IPA was you know an unfiltered uh, yeah you know version and I never really thought about that being one of the differences you know when you say prickly you mean like like piney or like more bitter uh, more bitter. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we're the the carbonation and the bitterness are kind of like playing off each other. It's kind yeah. of it has it's, a bigger uh, bite to it. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just for some reason, I think that that's my dog. My... I think getting water out of the toilet right now. <laughs> <clears throat> what would he pair that with? That's the question. Mm. Is that prickly? <laughs> yeah. I hope not. To- toilet water? <laughs> All is right. Your, is your water out there prickly? <laughs> or is it creamy and unfiltered? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I think the water note, out here is prickly. Yeah. On that note, let's, on that have, note, some, let's have some food pairing. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna pair this with some uh, some spicy Thai food, I think. Okay. See now, this beer, I want the taco. Maybe not the fish taco, but just a like crunchy, you know, hmm. chorizo, crunchy or... beef taco. You know, cr- yeah. cr- corn, crispy corn tortilla and a beef. Nice. So I'm thinking something cheesy. Almost like a yeah. well, there'd be cheese on my taco for sure. Well, like a like a <laughs> cheese and and cracker plate, or like a cheese and sausage and. I don't uh, think it's fruit. that fancy, Toby. <laughs> no. <laughs> you could go full circle and go uh, pretzel with beer cheese. <laughs> yeah. Never go full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I just think something something cheesy, even like a sharp cheese might go go well with this. Yeah, uh, it definitely would. How about the quesadilla? <laughs> There's lots of cheese in a the quesadilla. <laughs> there is. See, si. Mucho cheese. See. Si. Si. <clears throat> All right. On Untapped, uh, out of 290,130 ratings... Holy. Yeah. This ranks in at a 3.88. Wow. Good on you, dogfish. Jeez. It's almost uh, a four, a four that cap is... rating. <clears throat> it's rated higher than than the others. Yes. And I have checked this in three times. All the beers I've had tonight, I've checked in three times. <laughs> Uh, the shout out, instant shout out, to Derek D, who has drank in this beer four hundred and six times. Wow! <laughs> what I mean, is wrong with these people? It's it's not, you know, it's. No, I checked this in four times. Uh, I'm on twenty six. I, I I guess I checked yeah. into this. I must have been going for a badge or something. <laughs> Sure. I mean, Derek is no, you know, stay P there with his 811 ratings. Yeah. Check-ins, but uh, popular but, locations. Know, it's, it's hard to compete with Mr. Stay Puff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, popular locations, MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, home of the Giants and Jets. Uh, Floyd's Bar in Victoria, Minnesota. And... Pier 6 Pavilion in Baltimore, Maryland. All right. The last time I checked this beer in was in 2013. That's wow. a... I wonder... Can I look to see when last time At I... At BJ's Restaurant and Brew House out there in Las Vegas. Let's see. Ooh, can I see time. my check-ins? Yeah, if you click on it. Uh, uh, I just checked into this beer uh, a minute ago. Oh wait, that was yeah. just now. I saw that. Uh, let me toast. Let me toast you real quick. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, 
In fact, the last time I checked into this in 2016 was at Fergie's Pub. Fergie. And uh, I have one comment on that check-in from Beer Coasters Podcast that says classic, solid. (laughs) See that? Craft classics. That's right. The last one was lunchtime at Lobster Land. Lobster Lobster Land. And I got a couple cheers. Malt Porter. (laughs) Nice. Nice. All right. Seeing that it is tomorrow, East Coast time, I think we should head right into a little thing called Alaska. Here we are. Yeah, face to face. We got to get the hell out of here. So for our three fermentation (laughs) conversations, we started off with the uh, Sam Adams Boston Lager. Mike, (gasps) what do you think, my friend? Oh, this is a. um, It's a tough one for me. I I, craft classic. It is a craft classic. Uh, and I have five more. <laughs> I, I have to say that I enjoyed the toasty maltiness of this beer. I enjoyed that aroma of getting more of almost like a Europe, you know, the European style uh, hops. Um, I'm not a huge fan of lagers. I've, I've mentioned that too. I think I even mentioned it while we were. Drinking beer. Yeah. Uh, I seriously don't know what to give a pint rating for this beer. Uh, you know, it's it's weird because I'm kind of I was thinking about it too before, and these beers have like they set the standard for a lot of the styles. Like we have a, a lager, we have a pale ale, and an IPA. But yeah, that doesn't mean you should rate it higher because it's stood the test of time and it kind of started something or it's something that you like to drink now you know it's up to you obviously but it's yeah so a lot of the time they i i'll rate things have different ratings for different reasons sometimes which is a horrible way to to do proper ratings i guess but i mean i'll do it by mood i do it by the experience i'll i do it by the style sometimes uh uh you do you, boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to know what you gave it back in two thousand nine? Yeah. Can I cheat? Can I? Yeah, can I see the, what I? The, yeah. Oh, go ahead. The fourth episode of the Beer Coasters podcast. Wait. Ever. The Logger Show. The Physio oh no! I'm sorry. Show? I'm sorry. I was thinking about the. Uh... What? No, I was thinking of the pale dogfish. One? Dogfish. The IPA issue. Oh, Physio. Yeah. yeah, this was August of two thousand ten. So this <clears> was. Uh, what did I give it? Season two. You gave it a three. three out of I three. did. And it's so funny because that was the first. <laughs> that's the first number in my head is what I was thinking. But it's like, I, I don't think that that's. Um, I feel like it deserves a little more respect than that, even though it's not. I don't know. I feel like if I were a judge. And it was. I don't know. This is tough. I'm going to give it a three and a half. All right. Okay. Yeah. Should we all go and, and do the we logger? Like a little and then better can... now. Yeah, let's all do this, The our logger, and then we'll all do each of them. Okay. So, Toby, what do you think of the uh, Boston logger? Um, I, for some reason, didn't have a rating for this the first time we did it on the show. I don't know why. I, I didn't get it. I don't know what the reason was, but... Chris and Mike both had a rating for it, and I did not. Um, Sam Adams Boston Lager. You probably had a you probably had a spoiled one that was probably like oxidized or something. You're like, oh man, I can't rate. It. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't feel um, right rating this beer. I'm not really a big lager drinker either. I do uh, respect the lager when it's when it's well made and in traditional lager brewing. Techniques, techniques. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> ingredients and stuff like that. 
I mean, this is this is not bad, and and you kind of it's with Sam Adams, Boston Lager. You kind of have to like give respect where respect is due, but yeah, like this isn't something that I would like. You know, don't the only reason why I bought this was because we were doing it on the show, and I wouldn't normally go out and get it. And but it's like what we were saying during the the fermentation conversation. If they had it on tap somewhere, and it was. Either that or obviously. Sometimes it is your only choice. You know, there's so many restaurants where it still is your only choice. Which so of course, of course, you're gonna pick this over Stella, or you're gonna pick this over, you know, X. Yeah, X brand lager. (laughs) Right. So I think I'm with Mike. I think I'm gonna go three and a half. Right. It's it's right. good. It's solid. It's it's. I feel not like we're like both being it. pretty generous, but I, I understand yeah. our perspective. <laughs> I understand where we're coming from. But it's not like it's not. You can still tell that it's not, you know, uh, mass. You know, whatever. A B in Ma- macro macro mm. right macro. Well, we know it's still not right. It's not thinned out right. with corn or rice, and you can definitely. Right taste the difference in that you know and i know that i've had some some local small you know some local breweries that that have done lagers before that i have enjoyed better than this so that's probably why i'm gonna go three and a half so Hmm. uh i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go with a three um you know it's it stood the test of time it was one of those beers that yeah I kind of you, you kind of buy by accident because you have or you have to because you buy like a Sam Adams mix pack. I would probably never buy a six pack of this Boston Lager, but right. you go through and you have the uh, you know like say you're doing the the Winter Classics and you have like Old Fezziwig and you have uh, you know a uh, whatever IPA they're pushing at that point. Maybe there's like a maybe there's a Belgian Wit or where there's a there's a saison that they're trying to do and then you grab the Boston Lager and you're like okay like it's not bad it's not great Mm -hmm. it's 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 a stand is you know it's a stand-up beer and like if you're out at a pub and that's what the best option is then i have no problems going with it so great food pairing beer um nothing great i don't need to get it again uh you know but and and don't you think too that part of this is we where we're almost kind of spoiled in a sense of because we have we usually have so many other choices and that's why we wouldn't go grab a six pack of sam adams but yet if we're in the middle of nowhere and that's all it was like for for choices were these you know macro loggers and the sam adams we'd absolutely go to the sam adams yeah so i I think it it really matters on you know what's the availability yeah yeah what's what's the availability and and back in the day you know, when we didn't have all these other choices, then uh, I think we, this would probably fare better, you know, uh, ratings wise with us, be, you know, but it's it's just tough because there's so many things out there. And this is kind of a here's a, here's a textbook, you know, lager. And, right. And I it, it reminds me of I don't know, it's. It's like one of the. It's like that feeling that it's almost like a mom and pop shop where you're like, okay, you know, they've been around for a long time. We want to support them, even yeah. though they don't really have the kind of stuff that we like anymore because we've kind of right. moved past that technologically <laughs> or whatever it is. And so, but you don't want to stop supporting them because you're like, nah, they've been around forever. They're awesome. They're cool. We like them. They're kind of like part of the family. They're part of the neighborhood and all this stuff. That's kind of how I feel about yeah. the Boston Lager because, like, I don't want it to go away because I have all this respect for it because it's been around. It's does right. it. It has done is it has done its its part, right? In the craft beer world, and so like when I read these things about about maybe Boston beer companies like profits are slumping or they're not seeing the numbers that they saw before and they're kind of like scrambling to keep up with the modern craft beer stuff and i'm just like i kind of feel bad but then i'm like no i mean they they you know i'm sure uh greg cook like is proud is still proud of what he's done he's still proud of his product oh sorry jim Jim. sorry greg is stone so jim cook is still he's still proud of his product and 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 he'll still he's not going to change what he's doing 
but at the same time you're just like yeah it's kind of like this thing that you're just like you know i, I don't I, know like an old person you kind of feel sorry for but it's not that it's terrible that's the thing is it's not bad it's still a well-made beer it's still a really good beer and it's better than a lot of stuff that's out there in its in I, its genre i agree right. and i and i i know i, I want to move on to the next one but i i want to just kind of say i feel like all these beers need to play the game a little differently than what you just compared it to so like boston lager is not going to compare to you know a lesion out in seattle you know doing a cool ipa or like something like we talked about you know barrel house z you know they're not going to yeah. they're not going to compare to those guys or like a yeah. new ipa that's out there that harpoon might be doing but right. the the sam adams boston lager needs to be like a ballpark staple and then yeah. the ballpark instead of like you look at the macro beers and like coors light like it, and you know Budweiser and Bud Light, like all Anheuser Busch stuff, like they are the top selling. Why? Because they're at all these like NASCAR events and all these like ballparks. Like Sam Adams Boston Lager, as simple as it is, needs to be a staple beer in like sporting events, and that's 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 the market. So like, yeah. leave the yeah. taps, you know, at the mom and pop shops, you know, uh, full of the new IPAs coming out and all the new things, and and let Sam Adams kind of find a different market and uh, be able to keep on going i'm just hoping that that's that jim sees that and he understands it and isn't like getting down on himself for like oh my god our our sales are slumping and what are we gonna do we gotta like keep up it's like no just keep doing what you're doing but find the right places to put your stuff you know instead of i don't know adding more stuff yeah whatever but it's not like they don't do other good stuff because i've had some really yeah uh, cool other off things from from Sam Adams, they they do. I mean the the whole Rebel, they do the Rebel series and stuff with the yep. IPAs and stuff. They're yeah. they're not bad. They're pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, right. let's go on to the whole the... New World series yeah. and all this stuff. My, Tony's yeah. trying to wrap this up. I'm trying. I, I understand. Yeah, gotta keep <laughs> keep pushing on. <laughs> keep the show Give rolling. Wrap it up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm I was gonna wrap do up, a beat. read a little thing that Beer Coaster Charlie did from our original show, but I'll I'll save it. You're gonna wait. A little nugget. Uh, Toby, why don't you kick off the uh, the Sierra Nevada because you had that one. Because I'll ramble. Uh, no. Let's see. <laughs> For the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Keep it short there, pal. <laughs> I think this is a really, really well made beer. It is solid. I mean, there's. I don't think there's anything wrong with this beer for my palate. I know that there's people that, like me, back in the day, would come into this and going, oh, no, 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 it's too bitter. It's There's too much sharpness or prickliness, right, Mike? Um, yeah. But, you, what'd you call him? <laughs> but uh, prickly. For, for where my palate is now and my experience and stuff and, and having this again and revisiting this, and not just taking it as the banquet beer or whatever, you know, the 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 beer that's. I think that's the wrong brand. That's a uh, Coors like, original. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like the beer that's just yeah, oh yeah, we got hearing about a pair. Right, we're gonna get sued for that now. <laughs> I dude, I'm going five pints on this. What? So I'm going. Five pints on the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I love it. It's great, and yeah. it's it's so awesome that I'm able to like really taste it now and and like review it now because for the most part it's one of those things where i feel like i was drinking it out of the bottle and it was at like picnics and and you know wherever it was never something that i actually sat down and like okay let me drink this and just having that last sip i'm like yeah man this is good this is solid it's got all the right sensations, hitting all the right buttons with my palate. So, I'm Toby's sorry, buttons, guys. five points, man. Hashtag it's, Toby's I think buttons. It's solid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I agree that it's it is a solid beer, and there's part of me that agrees with Toby on the the other part of it, where this guy brewed a beer. And other breweries decided to, 
like step up their game to get to the level I think that the Sierra the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale has been at since day one. Um, and I still feel like if we can go go back this many years later and try this beer and it still stands up uh, the, the test of time um, is pretty impressive. Um, I'm not going to give it five pints because there are other pale ales that I like. You're not crazy. You know, that, uh, yeah, because I'm not completely insane. <laughs> but um, I... I am really impressed that a beer can stand up and be this solid still. Uh, and there's still some other crap beers that still aren't as good as this here in Nevada Pale Ale, you know. Um, I'm going to give it a, a four because that's kind of just my good rock solid uh yeah rating so yeah i'm give i'm give, giving it a four mm-hmm. still a still really good and i'm really impressed that it's kind of held up as well as it has all these years this is like one of those i never really like consider it as like the fridge beer this is the beer that you should probably always have on hand. Yeah. like this is the yeah. oh, i come home from work i just want to crack a beer right but i don't want, want some to drink, drinkable i don't want to drink garbage but, you know, here we go. Let me just crack. Oh, pale ale. It's going to satisfy. It's going to, you know, for me, it's going to hit the right buttons. It's going to yeah. tingle, you know, tickle the right parts of my tongue. Yeah. And it's going to satisfy. It's that's I guess that's what it is, is, is it's always going to satisfy. Yeah. You know, uh, Sierra Nevada has, was the beer that kind of introduced me to a lot of different, uh, you know, styles and I'd probably have to say, you know, even with a Dogfish 60, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't buy a six pack of Dogfish 60 now because, I mean, if they're, if it's a Dogfish, they're going to come out with something new or like Mike had pointed out about the 90, like I probably more apt to like, you know, it depends, I guess, how much I'm going to be drinking of that particular beer. But okay. it's, what's interesting is that even though like I kind of started drinking Sierra Nevada a long time ago, I would easily like, I wouldn't even hesitate to grab a six pack if I'm going to a picnic at this point. Like it's still one of my go-to beers, yeah. <laughs> even after all these years. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it three and a half. You know, it's it's nothing that is amazing. You're not gonna have it and just you know it's not gonna you know blow your socks off. But it's gonna be something that you could easily go back to, and it's been a consistent, you know. It, it delivers consistently so yeah and see and to that speaking to that that's it is amazing because it's amazing in the form of that it's just it's 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 a staple like that you know like i, I can go and i know that this is a good solid beer i'm not going to be disappointed i can bring it and nobody's going to be disappointed with what i brought you know it's it's um Unless they're super snobby and like, what? Why did you just bring this pale ale? <laughs> but it's 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 dilly dilly, <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> this has been this... hearing about a pale ale. I've been really box. into lately. <clears throat> <laughs> oh man! Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's it's a rock solid beer, and I and I think it will be for years to come even though we're in the i don't know if we're in the past or the future or where the heck we are right now but i'm sure sierra nevada pale ale (laughs) is still rock solid no matter where we are whether it's 1955 (laughs) 2015 17 whatever or if if we're in the alternate 1985 with biff's casino hotel (laughs) yeah Uh, And then the last beer we had uh, was the uh, Dogfish 60. And um, I'm going to go – I'm going to go – Do yourself. Go, go. You do yourself. (laughs) Do yourself. You do you. Do do yourself. (laughs) Whoa, not on this show. Tony, I want to see you do you. (laughs) 
was, was that your Elvis? <laughs> that was his acting coach. I was I was being his acting coach. I was oh, like, getcha. I feel I feel my motivation. I'm I'm trying to emote right now. I couldn't figure out was this Elvis or Derek Zoolander <laughs> or or what? The answer is yes to everything. <laughs> Uh, Elvis Zoolander. I'm gonna go three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Again, it's it's a solid beer. It uh, it needs to find its niche. And actually, I think if you go to a lot of Baltimore area uh, ballparks, I'm pretty sure that uh, you could probably find this uh, in a lot of the establishments like you know yeah. Camden Yards where the Orioles play and probably RFK Stadium that's in Washington and um, you know whatever so you uh, want to see so you're a big fan of having the craft classics at the ballpark yeah 100% yeah I, like I want to see that's... I want to see all three of these on tap at all the ballparks across the country absolutely yeah craft classics we got to pitch it there you go let's pitch it to the MLB I like three it and a half. Let's see what you did there uh, I'm a big fan of puns Uh, Mike, what do you think? Uh, I have to say that I enjoyed sipping on this this time around than the last time I remember drinking this beer. Um, I love the 90. Uh, the 60 was 90 always a little... Awesome. Yeah. The, I love the 60 for me compared to the 90 was just... It was it was drier, a little more bitter, and I, I didn't, it didn't have that... Uh, the malt balance that that uh, that I that I liked in the ninety and the ninety had a uh, the juicier kind of hoppiness that I liked. There's, some, um, there's something that happens when you go to a double. There's just something that happens. Yeah. You know, something changes and it just. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like going to Neverland, man. Yeah. It's 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 worlds apart. Something changes when you get to a double. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's just like shut up I want to go to bed <laughs> uh, but I'll have to say sitting down trying this tonight I, I really really enjoyed it and I am going to match the uh, Sierra Nevada with a four nice um, and I and I th- it, I'm, I'm, I'm rating this on my experience tonight um because I would definitely rate the 90 higher than the 60, mm-hmm. but maybe I only give the 90 a, a four. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter because it's tonight about the present. Thank you. This is tonight. Ah. <clears throat> I think I'm with you, Mike, on that. I'm going to go four pints also with the 60 minute. And one thing I will recommend to people, because I went through a whole case of this. I bought it at Costco a while back when we were talking about doing the 60 minute and I was like oh here it is let me get a whole case of it I went through the whole thing and then I saved one and so it's been I've been saving it for a couple of weeks oh. um, I would warm. recommend people let it warm up I think when it warms up it's really starts to I don't know I, I'm warming it up now like having the last few sips of the glass it's really nice it's mm. Nice. It's like smooth and it's sweet and it's kind of, you know, it's creamy and it's still hoppy, but it's not bitter. And it's just, I don't know. It's really, it's really nice when you let it warm up. So nice. that's why I'm going with the four because going through the rest of the case, I think I cracked him and had him a little too soon yeah. cold out of the fridge. And I was, I remember going through it and going, yeah, this is okay. This is, yeah. I don't know, this is all right. I got a whole case of this. I drank them all, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was like, yeah, this is okay. But no, for sure. You got to let it kind of rest, warm up a little bit, sip it slowly, and it's it's nice. Four pints. Nice. Cool. Excellent. All right. Well, shout believe outs. it or not, let's that do might, one, uh, let's do one shout out. <laughs> one big shout out. <laughs> to Lucas Mello 20. Stay, stay P. That's right. Or stay P. <laughs> stay P. In the house. And whoever that Brazilian guy was that commented uh, yeah. earlier tonight. Portuguese Brazilian guy. Yeah. Yeah. Luke Lucas Mello twenty. Or Lucas Mayo twenty. 
He said, Como asim mano nao to entendendo nada. <laughs> Which is? Do you speak Tony? Portuguese? Oh, uh, I don't have it up anymore. Oh, okay. Damn. Something about not knowing something. Something about brother. not knowing what you're talking about. Or yeah. You guys are a bunch of wankers. Wankers. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of effing wankers. Uh, so we've managed to upset the Brazilian Portuguese and the what was it Australian was the guy before I don't know he called us wankers, so wankers. he's either Australian or he's British the German or something I don't remember German yeah and just a reminder to all of our <laughs> listeners <laughs> this is your show we're just we're still in talking it. in it <laughs> we're still talking in it cheers 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 oh. Clang, clang, clang. Clickety, clang, clang. Good Check show, guys. Uh, BeerCoachersPodcast.com. See ya.